When I was growing up, the world was a barren place of dunes and mirages, of dust clouds and heat waves. It was an environment I got used to. My grandparents recalled it wasn't always like this, and that the world used to be a very different place. They told me that we always had deserts, but we also had huge tracts of green areas covered in wood. It was this wood that supported all sorts of life, from the frozen latitudes to the tropical equator. They talked about millions and millions of species that relied on wood for homes and food. From the tiniest of creatures to large mammals, all called the wood home. Tigers apparently roamed and lived in this wood. Broadbills perched up high, flashing brilliant colors. Birds of paradise performed their absorbing dances. Wild boar gorged on the fruits falling from above. They said you could just look into the green and hear the sound of life. Wood in its growing form was an Eden for everybody. These great green expanses also regulated the weather, providing the necessary rainfall and the very oxygen we breathe. Wood was the lifeblood for all these wild creatures. It was not only the animals that utilized wood. Us humans used to harvest a great living from wood, turning many of the fruits into a staple food for our needs. We cultivated many different varieties into food crops and also harvested it to create things for our way of life. All around the world, different cultures used wood in different ways. As our population grew, our need to consume vast quantities of wood became untenable. We cultivated only fast-growing wood to the detriment of other species to feed our desire to have furniture, homes, and other creature comforts. Eventually, most of the land was used only to cultivate the fast-growing wood varieties and food crops. For a while, everything seemed perfect. That was until the unexpected happened. A resistant type of tree disease had formed and within a few short years, wiped out all these species. The landscape totally changed. My grandparents said it happened so quickly that in one generation, nearly all our earth was a dust bowl. The seas began to rise and fresh water was in short supply. There were only a few small pockets of wood left, which scientists had protected and developed into eco-labs to try and right the situation. That was how it was when I was growing up. But now, thankfully to the scientists eradicating the disease and stockpiling thousands of species of seeds, we have started to revive the wood. In 50 years, the jungle giants have started to regain their stature. And large tracts of land have regained the green line. The streams and rivers have once again begun to flow. And the animals too have migrated back to old grounds. It's taken a while, but the future looks bright. We even managed to restart the cultivation of many of our food and wood crops and for now, life is back to how my grandparents remembered it. They always said that wood was the bedrock of our existence. We just expected it to last forever, without looking after it. This episode served a notice, and one which we have heeded ever since. We need to manage our needs and the environment, because life is not just for you and me, it's for our future too. Now, as I walk through the wood, remembering how it once was and could be once again. It is clear that wood is vital for our life. It's what makes life happen. For when you look up in the trees, there are millions of living things relying on wood. For homes, for food, for life. 
Wood is one of our oldest living life forms. Some of the oldest trees have been around since Roman times, and their use of wood helped pave the way for our progress through history. Just as it was used in our past, it is strikingly obvious that for the future survival of our cultures, we must also include wood.